Hey, it's Jake, and today I want to talk to you about my Tourbox Neo software controller and specifically how it works with After Effects. I want to start by saying this is not a sponsored video in any way. Tourbox did graciously give me this device at no cost to me, but with no obligation to create anything from it. I'm creating this video because I want to give my honest feedback of this product and hopefully help you decide if it's a good fit for your own After Effects workflow. Now, this device does have very specific uses for certain applications like Premiere and Photoshop, but because my channel is focused on After Effects, that's what I'm gonna be focused on with this device, how it works in After Effects. The Neo is a software controller that you can think of like an extension of your keyboard. There are a whole bunch of buttons, switches, and dials that you can assign specific commands to for individual applications. It looks a whole lot like a video game controller, but it is hefty. It is very well built. It feels very premium. All of the buttons and dials are very smooth, very clicky and responsive. It feels like a really well-made product. It connects to your device with a USB cable that comes in the box. It's a nice threaded, high quality USB cable, but that's all you need to power and use this device. Tourbox Console is the program that comes with the Neo and it makes it really easy to create presets and assign them to specific applications. So I'm just gonna click on the plus button for the new preset and call this After Effects. Click Create and then right here where it says No Link, I'm going to click on that and scroll down to find After Effects and click OK. Now Tourbox knows that whenever I'm in After Effects, it should be referencing this set of presets. And over here is where I can assign the presets to any of my buttons and dials on the Neo. And as I highlight over any one of these options, they all show up in this nice overlay right in the program, so I don't even have to think about where these buttons are on the device itself. So let's set up this knob right here to advance forward and backward in the timeline. I'll click on this button right here that says not set, and since we're rotating this counterclockwise, this should advance backwards one frame. So I'm gonna press page up on the keyboard to assign that keystroke to this preset. And I'll give it a name by editing this tag right here, and I'll say back one frame. I'll click on OK, and then I'll do the opposite for rotating clockwise. So click on not set, I'll press the page down key, and then add another tag that says forward one frame. I'll click OK, and immediately if I go into After Effects, I'm able to very precisely move one frame at a time simply by twisting that dial. And the way that this console is laid out makes it very easy to see all of the possible buttons that you can assign shortcuts to, as well as which buttons work together to be able to make combinations and add even more presets. All of these dials are even able to be pressed in, so let's take a more complicated shortcut like centering the anchor point in the layer content. So if my anchor point was off center here, to recenter that with the keyboard, I would have to press Control, Alt, Home. So three keyboard buttons. Let's assign that to the dial press. So I'll click right here and I'll repeat that same keyboard shortcut. Control, Alt, Home. I'll give it a tag called Center Anchor Point. Click OK, jump into After Effects, reposition that anchor point again, and then press in on my dial. And just like that, my anchor point is centered. The easiest way to think about this inside of After Effects is an extension of your keyboard. In the future, I've been told that there will actually be macros enabled on this device, meaning that you can string together multiple commands with one button. But for now, it's just single commands inside of After Effects. If you can assign a keyboard shortcut in After Effects, you can assign it to the Neo. And some of these buttons are even able to be used in combination with other buttons or even double clicked so that you can extend this device's range even further than the buttons that you see. And in After Effects, that's basically the extent of this device's capabilities. Now, obviously some of those keyboard shortcuts are very complicated and it can be difficult to even execute them sometimes, especially with one hand. And this eliminates that problem. But don't think that it's going to replace your keyboard because obviously there are things in After Effects that you need to be able to do beyond just keyboard shortcuts. For instance, being able to type out text. In a program like Photoshop, you might be using a Cintiq to do digital painting, in which case you would want to get your bulky keyboard out of the way. And this device would be a tiny form factor that you could set next to the Cintiq and assign a ton of keyboard shortcuts to, like rotating the canvas, zooming in and out, or increasing or decreasing your brush size. And I think that's a perfect use case for this type of device device, but in After Effects, I don't generally do that type of work, so it's not gonna be replacing that keyboard. And honestly, I had a little bit of a difficult time even thinking, what should I be assigning to these buttons? 
For instance, I saw this D-pad that looks a whole lot like a D-pad on a video game controller, and I thought I could map the up, down, left, and right arrows to it so I could shift things around on the screen. So I set it up that way, and I tested it out, and it worked perfectly. It did exactly what I thought it would, but then I realized I just assigned four keys that I already have on my keyboard to four keys on the Neo. There's no benefit of me using those keys on this device rather than on my keyboard. So I'm not trying to say that this is a stupid device with buttons that don't really serve any purpose since I have my keyboard in front of me. What I'm saying is you need to think a little bit more creatively about what would be easier to use these buttons for rather than what I already have on my keyboard in front of me. Now, as I was trying to be creative and think up useful ways of using these different dials and switches, I thought maybe I could map this dial right here to adjusting a slider value, say, on an effect. So any property that I've selected by clicking on, I could adjust that value just by twisting this dial around. So I set that up inside of the Toolbox console, and sure enough, it worked exactly how I wanted it to inside of After Effects. Except as soon as I was done adjusting the property, I wanted to undo and revert back to where it was before I adjusted anything. And what I realized is that this dial is just basically executing that keyboard shortcut over and over and over again as I rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. So it was actually tapping the up arrow hundreds of times and the down arrow hundreds of times every time I went back and forth on that dial, meaning that my undo history was completely full with all of these keyboard taps. Essentially meaning I could not get back to the original state before I started messing with the dial unless I actually typed it in. So in my opinion, that didn't really work as an effective use of that dial. And these are the kinds of things that you're gonna have to think through if you choose to get this device. Now fortunately, Tourbox users can actually upload their presets to the Tourbox website. And you can browse these presets yourself to see how other people are using this device in the application that you're trying to set up. So you're not starting completely from scratch. But I'm sure, just like with any device, every user is going to wanna set it up specifically to their own workflow. Another really important thing to think about is that you can only assign keyboard shortcuts to these buttons in After Effects. So if there's a menu command or a specific button in a panel that you don't have access to through keyboard shortcuts already, you cannot assign that to the Neo. So a quick way to know all of the different commands that are mappable to the Neo is to just open up the keyboard shortcuts panel inside of After Effects. Browse all of the commands there. You're bound to find something that you didn't realize could be a keyboard shortcut. And then you can create a custom keyboard shortcut for it that you can then map to the Neo. So while it might take you a little bit of time to figure out what commands would be best suited for the Neo, it is extremely quick and easy to be able to assign them through the Toolbox console and then immediately test it out inside of After Effects. So should you buy the Toolbox Neo? Well, it really comes down to what you're going to use it for. If you're only working in After Effects, then it's just going to allow you to extend your keyboard, which might be worth it to you. If you have keyboard shortcuts that you find difficult to execute, especially if it takes two hands, you don't wanna move your hand off the mouse, then you can assign that to a single button press or a dial turn on the Neo, and it will work exactly the way that you want it to. And the reality is most people who are working in After Effects aren't only working in After Effects. Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere all come into my workflow regularly, and there are lots of benefits to this device in all of those programs as well, which helps justify the purchase of this device. But even if you are only working in After Effects, if these features seem attractive to you, you will not be disappointed in your purchase. It is a very solid product. I never once had a technical problem with it, and it was really easy to be able to jump back and forth between the console and the actual application to test out my presets. I wanna give a huge thank you to the people at Tourbox for not only giving me this device, but also for allowing me to make a 100% honest video reviewing their product, specifically in regards to After Effects. If you're interested in purchasing a Neo, the Tourbox team has given me a coupon code for $10 off of the device, and you can find that in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.